Like and subscribe right now, or this spider will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. What if we try and colonize Mars? From the extreme cold to the deadly radiation, there are many traits about Mars that make it inhospitable for humans. But even that hasn't stopped us from plotting and planning to one day occupy as Mars, has it? In fact, we're expecting to have a fully functioning independent colony on the planet by the year 2050. But before we do so, we've got to settle this. Is it viable for us to set our sights on the red planet? What exactly will happen if we colonize Mars? In this video, we'll reveal all this plus so much more. So buckle up, because it's going to be a bumpy interplanetary ride. Number 7. The Financial Setback Let's face it, going to Mars will cost us a pretty penny. NASA's current Mars mission concept would set us back about $50 billion over the course of a decade or about as twice as much as the moon program cost between 1962 and 1972. Nevertheless, there are some financial analysts who believe that it can be done for cheaper, but it would still cost us around $20 billion. Let's also not forget that spaceflight is also very dangerous, even if it's smooth sailing during the launch. The life support systems on the ship could fail at any time during the nine months it takes to get to Mars. And that's not to mention the intense radiation and reduced gravity you'd be subjected to. It would definitely be a bumpy ride. So even if enough money is raised for the journey, getting to the surface of Mars is no easy task. Right now, no technology exists that could land humans safely on the surface. The largest thing we've ever landed there is roughly the size of a car. Before we move on, I've got a little challenge for you that'll take 5 seconds to complete. So here's the deal, you just leave a like on this video, smash that subscribe button, and hit the notification bell, and you will get 25 years of amazing luck. Try it, it really works. Number 6. The Harsh Red Planet Once we get to Mars, we're going to have to adjust to the tough weather. We'd have to deal with the fact that it's freezing. The average temperature is minus 81 degrees Fahrenheit. While a summer day near the equator can reach 70 degrees, it can plunge to nearly minus 200 degrees in winter near the poles. Mars's atmosphere is also extremely thin and contains just 0.15% oxygen, which is not nearly enough to breathe. Most of the atmosphere is 96% carbon dioxide. Mars's thin atmosphere is less efficient at shielding the surface from harmful radiation, like UV light from the sun and high-energy cosmic rays. This radiation can severely damage plant and animal cells, and can even be fatal if we don't have the right protective equipment on. Number 5. Growing Food on Mars Agriculture could also be another major setback if we don't plan well for it. You see, as master growers, we require the right balance of bacteria and chemicals to grow plants on Earth. And as far as we know, the Martian soil is devoid of all life, including bacteria. Mars receives about one-third to half of the amount of sunlight as Earth, depending on where it is in orbit around the Sun. With less sunlight, solar-powered instruments take longer to charge and farming could prove quite complex. Let's also not forget that these plants need water, which is essential for life as we know it. Unfortunately, Mars was once home to gigantic oceans, but today it mostly exists in the form of ice at Mars's poles. Number 4. The Natural Disaster Element As a dry and dusty planet, Mars is regularly plagued by dust storms that last for a few days and can carry tiny dust particles at a staggering speed of 66 miles per hour. On rare occasions, the storms are big enough to cover the entire planet for several weeks. In addition to surviving the tough external conditions, the first people to travel to the red planet will likely have to contend with feelings of isolation and loneliness unlike anything they've ever encountered. And when it comes to talking to your friends back on Earth, you'd have to deal with this. On average, Mars is 12.5 light minutes from our home planet. That means it would take at least 25 minutes to have a conversation with someone on Earth. In other words, if something went wrong, you're on your own. Besides the mental challenges, our bodies would suffer too. 
on Mars, you'd weigh one third of what you weigh on Earth, which could have unforeseen health consequences. Our muscles evolved under Earth's gravity, but with lower gravity, it's possible that we could lose muscle mass, similar to how astronauts do under zero gravity. Number three, potential to destroy Mars. Colonizing Mars also means that in case there's any life out there, we could be putting it into extreme danger. The closest place in the universe where extraterrestrial life might exist is Mars, and human beings are poised to attempt to colonize this planetary neighbor within the next decade. Before that happens, we need to recognize that a very real possibility exists that the first human steps on the Martian surface will lead to a collision between terrestrial life and biota native to Mars. If the red planet is without life, then our presence would create no moral or ethical dilemmas on this front. But if life does exist on Mars, human explorers could easily lead to the extinction of Martian life. And now we've come to the best pick of the day. Can you imagine what the first colony on Mars will look like? Because the conditions will be so harsh, we will probably have to live in special houses that recreate the same atmosphere and gravitational pull as that of Earth. Amazing. Number two, taking care to not contaminate. This would mean that we would have to take the threat of biological contamination very seriously. It would become a necessity for us to first sterilize spacecrafts that are being sent to Mars. Indeed, for more than five decades, planetary exploration missions have adhered to sterilization standards that balance their scientific goals with limitations of not damaging sensitive equipment, which could potentially lead to mission failures. Mars is the target of seven active missions, including two rovers, Opportunity and Curiosity. In addition, on November 26th, NASA's InSight mission is scheduled to land on Mars. The good news is that robotic rovers pose little risk of contamination to Mars, since all spacecraft designed to land on Mars are subject to strict sterilization procedures before launch. Therefore, these rovers likely have an extremely low number of microbial stowaways. Additionally, any terrestrial biota that do manage to hitch rides on the outside of those rovers would have a very hard time surviving the half-year journey from Earth to Mars. The vacuum of space combined with exposure to harsh X-rays, ultraviolet light, and cosmic rays would almost certainly sterilize the outsides of any spacecraft sent to Mars. Any bacteria that sneaked rides inside one of the rovers might arrive at Mars alive. But if any escaped, the thin Martian atmosphere would offer virtually no protection from high energy, sterilizing radiation from space. Those bacteria would likely be killed immediately. Because of this harsh environment, life on Mars, if it currently exists, almost certainly must be hiding beneath the planet's surface. Since no rovers have explored caves or dug deep holes, we have not yet had the opportunity to come face to drill bit with any possible Martian microbes. Given that the exploration of Mars has so far been limited to unmanned vehicles, the planet likely remains free from terrestrial contamination. But when Earth sends astronauts to Mars, they'll travel with life support and energy supply systems, habitats, 3D printers, food and tools. None of these materials can be sterilized in the same way as systems associated with robotic spacecraft can. Human colonists will produce waste, try to grow food, and use machines to extract water from the ground and atmosphere. Simply by living on Mars, human colonists will contaminate Mars. Number 1. The Consequences so, if we can't do anything about contaminating Mars, then why are we willing to risk Martian life of human exploration and colonization of the Red Planet? Well, even if we ignore or don't care about the risks a human presence would pose to Martian life, the issue of bringing Martian life back to Earth has serious societal, legal, and international implications. What risks might Martian life pose to our environment or our health? And does any one country or group have the right to risk back contamination if those Martian life forms could attack the DNA molecule and thereby put all of life on Earth at risk? Some scientists believe they have already uncovered strong evidence for life on Mars, both past and present. 
If life already exists on Mars, then Mars, for now at least, belongs to the Martians. Mars is their planet, and Martian life would be threatened by a human presence there. With that being said, we've come to the very end of the video. So let me ask you guys, does humanity have the right to colonize Mars simply because we soon will be able to do so? Let us know in the comment section down below. Would you want more videos that will surely exist until the very end of time? Click on any of the videos you see on the screen. As always, thank you all so very much for watching.